Hey everyone, it's Eileen. And I'm Dan. And we're Bates Photography on the Road here at Rhinebeck, New York. Beautiful Rhinebeck, New York. Historic Rhinebeck, New York. Highly recommend it. Established 1686. So come along for this journey. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. We are up and in it. We are at the base of the Catskills. It feels like we're literally in the middle of nowhere up here and it's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Very reminiscent, this is gonna sound weird, but very <laughs> reminiscent of like the Twilight movies. There are like yes. hundred foot pines everywhere. <laughs> it's been damp and rainy and it, it just feels like the Northwest. It's <laughs> insane. It's true. Um, well, the one thing that I wanna tell you is the air is crisp and clean. That's for sure. Yeah, it's super oxygenated from all the uh, forest that we're in the middle of. I would I would assume that's what's going on, but absolutely, just come out. You take a big breath of air, and it just it just feels different up here. We're in town to cover their first annual Oktoberfest, and it's a pretty sweet area up here. It's a little bit mountainy. We're at the base of the Catskills, and we're staying at Inner Lake RV Campground and Resort. Uh, it's amazing. We'll do some drone and some drive-through video here and really tell you a little about the campground but more importantly we're going to visit downtown Rhinebeck where unbeknownst to us evidently is the celebrity's uh, hidden playground around here. So like we were saying driving in we're at Interlake RV campground and it is it's on this lake although you can see in the drone footage I'm about to roll as I'm on the b-roll it's it's very lily pad and shallow, but as it goes either way, it, it opens up. Um, it's between a valley here between two mountains, so there's it just goes on for miles. This lake uh, has a little pond, little duck pond, has a little feed thing you can get feed out to throw to the ducks. Laundromat, bathhouses, generic campground amenities. They really have a really nice public area, like community room. Arcade it has a, a snack bar, a little grill there, a little stage where they have events, live music, things like that. Uh, right now they're decorating up for Halloween. And we are in October here. And it's it's a really great campground. It's multi-layered because it's kind of coming down the little mountain we're on here. So as you go to different sections of the campground, it actually like you go down a hill and then it flattens out and down a hill it's like little plateaus. So it really has a neat feel to it. It is pretty close to downtown Rhinebeck, maybe a five, seven minute drive. And then, you know, from there, we're out in the mountains. There's really nothing around here. Uh, you can go over the bridge to Kingston, which is the big city, actually, former capital of New York. Uh, pretty big city over the bridge. And I'm gonna try to get some drone footage of that bridge. It's pretty amazing. You can see all the Catskill Mountains in the background. It's a really big bridge that spans the Hudson River. So, um, yeah, this is where we're at. We're not gonna do a full blown campground review so to speak not as it's standalone video this video is going to be more about riding back in Oktoberfest um, but I will do some b-roll for you right now I have a drive-through some drone footage and I got another great star capture through this little opening right above our camper here so enjoy the b-roll and stay tuned for Rhinebeck back and Oktoberfest
So we're in the village of Rhinebeck, and we're standing outside Samuel's Sweet Shop, uh, which... It's a cute little... It's a cute little, I'm assuming, sweet shop. And then we go inside, and they have giant Rice Krispie treats with Paul Rudd, Jeffrey Dean Anderson, and his wife, Hillary, his faces on these Rice Krispies. We were so confused. And uh, come to find out, they are partners and owners of this establishment now. Um, I know that Jeffrey Dean Morgan, known to most people as Negan on Walking Dead, but will always be John Winchester to me. Uh, he, he lives in this area and he has a farm and they, they're very active in the community. I don't know how Paul Rudd got in the picture, but it was pretty cool to walk in there and, and see these faces and hear the stories. Um, evidently, Rhinebeck, the village of Rhinebeck is, is home or the surrounding areas are home to many celebrities. This is like a little secret hideaway for everyone. Yeah. yeah because there's everything here. I mean, it's very um, far. If you want the farm, you have the farm, you have the fresh organic produce everywhere. And then you have this great downtown that has tons of restaurants and shopping. Yeah, it's, it's quite beautiful. I could live here easily. Now we're gonna walk a couple of stores up to Abe's Falafel. World famous Abe's Falafel House. Abba's. Abba's, I'm sorry, I say <laughs> Abe's. Abba's. Abba's Falafel. That's my grandfather, Abe. Abba's Falafel, and I want to talk a little bit about the store. We opened it two years ago. Before that, we used to sell falafel in the farmer's market. And uh, everything that we are doing is uh, made by us. Uh, the falafel, the sauces, uh, the tahini, the sabine, everything is made by us. And uh, um, all local ingredients, everything is vegan. And uh, even though it's vegan, we just uh, want the, 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 the taste of the hot sauce. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's pretty amazing. Now, <clears throat> I'm not particularly vegan or gluten free, but Eileen is. And it's given her a huge option, and she just dreams about this when, when we're not here. <laughs> I'm here, my favorite place in Rhinebeck. <laughs> So we, we have that back there is where the magic happens. Yes. <laughs> we were watching her, watch her scoop it out and frying it and putting it all together a little bit ago. It's, uh, it's a pretty amazing place to come to downtown Rhinebeck. This is where you want to be. Get here early because they close at 3. 3.30. 3.30. <laughs> what we like is good food and smile. That's what we like. And you deliver. And you deliver. deliver. <laughs> right, thank, you. thank you. As somebody who's eating a lot of falafel, tell me what you think about these. of Wilderstein Mansion. The jury's it's... still out on who it belongs to. It's either the Roosevelt's or the Vanderbilt's. 
uh, it was given to somebody, and I, all I know is go to TripAdvisor. It's on the top 10 things yeah. to do in Rhinebeck. Google, I'll give you something to do. <laughs> and uh, it really is worth it. We haven't even gone in yet, guys. And Well, this is the outside of the mansion, but what's amazing, amazing. as beautiful as that is, is the view when we turn around. Yes. So that's the Hudson River behind us there. And this is what this big mansion looks over, of course, as you go up to the higher floors, you get a much better view. That's I don't it. think this video will ever do justice to it's what we're seeing. It's a little blown out. We're gonna, we'll post some photos. Yeah, That's a little blown out right now back there, but it's, it's a pretty amazing view. Stunning. So here's the scoop. We just finished the tour. They wouldn't let us take any photos or videos of the inside. So the relation for this, this big historic property is FDR was just down the Hudson River here and they were friends. People along the Hudson Valley were all considered each other neighbors. And the woman who originally owned this place, Margaret Suckley, Suckley became very, very close intimate friends with FDR and Eleanor and the whole family. But then they ended up also being like six cousins. So it wasn't just friends, they were yeah, related they, they, somehow. Yeah, they were some sort of, through marriage, they were like six or yeah. six cousins. Uh, so much so that he would confide in her about things they were doing, like the invasion of Normandy. And she actually was in the room with him in Warm Springs, Georgia, when he died. Uh, her and a few of the other family members. Like so, witnessed his collapse. I mean, that's kind of yeah, traumatic. Yeah, pretty nutty. So it's not a Vanderbilt or an FDR, but it's there's actually a book out called uh, The Closest Companion that, that details the relationship that Margaret had with FDR and his family, uh, who are evidently just right down the river a little ways. But we definitely recommend this stop. I mean, the inside of the house, the woodwork, the history, they have all the original pieces. It was so, so good. Yeah, um, that's pretty amazing. Definitely stop in. It's like $11 for adults. You get a discount for seniors, $10. And we were on a tour with um, a bunch of fifth graders. Yeah, school trip just piled in at the last <laughs> just minute. just piled in. Uh, it was us and fifth graders, but yeah. it was they were very polite, and it was really quite interesting. Yeah, so. it was pretty cool. So check, check it, it out, out. Guys. So we're headed, guys, to Oktoberfest here at Rhinebeck. It's actually at their big fairgrounds. Rhinebeck is mainly known for their sheep and wool festival they have every year. And that is quite the event. I went to that um, about four years ago. And yeah, it's, it's a big to do. Um, but this one is new to the area. And they're going to have juried crafters and German food. So it's celebrating Oktoberfest. They have a whole bunch of family activities planned pumpkin carving and you know like anything that has to do with fall family fun it sounds like they're doing so we're excited to check it out yeah there there's a whole german population up here and in fact uh, when you come over the bridge from kingston uh it's rhinecliff and then you go in further inland and it's it's rhinebeck now rhine of course is the river that runs through Germany. So early German settlers and all, they just referred to it as the Rhine and then the local towns got their name that way. So the point is there was a big German uh, settlement here from hundreds of years ago. And at Oktoberfest, when you think Oktoberfest, of course, you always think about, you know, beer and bratwurst and all this celebration of German culture. But like most fairs in life nowadays in October, it's become a, a massive craft fair and a fall festival kind of all wrapped into one. So this is their first one and uh, it should be pretty awesome. So stay tuned for the footage. Hey, we made the red carpet at <laughs> The red carpet of Oktoberfest. Um, really, really cool. Looks amazing. Lots of booths, some food. We're gonna, get, and we're gonna get some coverage where we can, but a lot of the artisans have signs, no photography, no video. Yeah, so um, yeah, stay tuned to see what we get. Shooting me with words, but I will let them bruise. Even though 
it hurts, I won't show it to you Cause it will ricochet, I won't let it bite I will look at you and tell you that I'm alright Like a ricochet, it will come back to you Cause I don't care about you anymore So you can't hurt me like you did before Let me tell you Not because my eyes are open Your words will keep bouncing away And even if you're trying to hurt me My skin's getting thicker each day I don't know how you fall asleep at night Knowing that your words are hurtful It's just not So we're at a mouse in the house studio. Miss Jody Stahl makes all these amazing still. still I'm sorry, makes all these amazing <laughs> figurines. And Eileen just purchased where are we at? This, this guy. little mouse she, on a broomstick and a pumpkin all patch. Of the hats and the everything brooms. top to bottom is custom made. Absolutely adorable. She ships all over the place. And she can be found at a mouse in the house studio.com or on Facebook at a mouse in the house dash Jody J O D I still S T I L L two L's. And she's starting a children's and book series. These figurines have actually, yes, inspired her. She's actually writing a children's book. And she's been making figurines, all these little customized mice, Christmas mice. The mice of Ten Maples mice. Farm. The mice of Ten Maples the Farm. The mice of Ten Maples Farm. <laughs> And then she'll so, have characters to match. Keep an eye out for that. And she has these custom mice for every season. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, intricate work at a, a very reasonable price. True artistry. So I'm here with Krista and Birdhouse Brokerage, is it? That's right. Yes. And they have some amazing birdhouses. We'll show you here in a minute. My wife already bought one. Uh, um, tell yeah, us a little about, thank you. Yeah, tell us a little about the business. Okay. Uh, we've been selling birdhouses for 22 years or so. And my husband builds them all. They're made out of new and antique barn wood. We offer them in four colors. Do you want me to tell you the yeah. colors? Okay. Oh, no, well, I'll do that. Okay. Tell okay. us uh, where somebody can get in touch with you if they want to get one. Oh, I mean, sure. Do you ship them? Or? Sure. Yes, we ship worldwide. Um, we have a uh, website, and it is birdhousebrokerage.com. And uh, everything that's pretty is, straightforward and simple. Yeah, spelled exactly the yep. right way. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you. We're going to take a picture of some of the uh, birdhouses here and please, thanks for, for please spending some time with us. Go today. right ahead. I knew she was going to make it someday. <laughs> so, what are you looking to buy another one already? I don't know. I love them. <laughs> we just left Oktoberfest. It was pretty neat. It was cool. There were a lot of booths. It was a juried craft fair, so at least it was a lot of high-end art stuff and, and good handmade items. Yeah. Very small, I guess, because it's the first year, and unfortunately, we got some good coverage, but most of the artisan booths had signs, no video, no photos, because they're, I guess, afraid of somebody copying their work. Um, but we got some good stuff there and all, and the uh, I'll pass it on Eileen because I'm driving here to tell you all about it. Yep, you'll see in the footage, um, I'm obsessed with these birdhouses that we bought um, handmade. See, I love to support local handmade um, crafters, you know, that are just blood, sweat, and tears go into their projects, and I want to give the money, you know, 
I was trying really desperately to find things like for Christmas gifts, but um, of course I leave there with things for myself, one of which was the birdhouse. So And the mouse. And the mouse, and you'll see both of those. Um, somebody says a mouse, you know? <laughs> but yes, you gotta see this woman's creativity. It is just awesome. So I hope you enjoy the footage and um, it was a nice little fair. I mean, I don't know that I'd be running back to it next year, but I definitely think like for being in the area, it was a fun thing and they had perfect um, weather. So it was a perfect great, weather. It's great 50, day to do it. 58 degrees right now, which yeah. I'm dying. I have this jacket on, which is killing me. I usually never wear a jacket. I'm <laughs> the doesn't. guy, I'm the fat kid that wears shorts and a t-shirt in the middle of winter. Oh, gosh. Um, but it was like 37 this morning and, and it's, oh, you're gonna be in an open field walking around, bring a jacket. I'm like, as soon as I stop to get this drone footage of this bridge, this is coming off. <laughs> but um, it, it was their first year. I was a little disappointed that it wasn't more more Oktoberfest. Yeah. Um, they did have like a pumpkin patch for the little kids and all. They had one, they had a little area, it was a food court with different um, food trucks and all. And you'll see that in the B-roll. But they only had one real stand, and that was more kibasi and kraut and, and pierogies, yeah, pierogies, which, you know, is Polish food. Oftentimes, you see that at a, um, an Oktoberfest. But, yeah, there wasn't a lot of Oktoberfest. It was a lot more craft fair. Yeah. But it was a good quality. It was a good quality fair. It was fair. a good event, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, enjoy the B-roll. 